Low frequency amplifier is definitely one of the first designs that we assemble ourselves after having learned elementaries of electronics. For some reason, early amateurs are attracted by this very type of radio electronics after they have mastered primary terms of electronic elements tagging and soldering methods. These amateurs can do it still only in very primitive ways, but their skills will surely consolidate in some years' time. But the most important thing is to start trying and put some effort and design into it, which surely will help you master new radio electronic advances. Circuit diagrams of low frequency amplifiers are various and numerous. It is recommended to start DIY assembly from the diagram, which has proved to be re reliable over years of use by thousands of people, especially if such diagram was used or is still being used in home appliances. It is even simpler to use a semi-finished product that is a radio designing kit, for example NM2044. It has a ready assembled printed circuit board, a set of electronic components and of course wiring and circuit diagrams, which will help a lot during assembly. The amplifier with 22 watts of power for each channel is assembled on a microcircuit chip TA8210. It is a high quality chip used in car cassette radios. It is central component of the amplifier circuit. The rest is just binding consisting of few elements such as resistors, capacitors, as well as power and switching sockets. At first we do a complete assembly. Everything is described and shown here up to the smallest detail. The list includes designations and labeling of the components. The board has seats with full numbering according to a color labeling. So it's very difficult to do it wrong as the designing kit was developed by skilled engineers. Thus we start the assembly. I recommend to use Flux LTE 120 additionally to the solder as it will facilitate your work. At first we assemble the small circuit components. We solder them strictly according to the diagram. Resistors are soldered according to color labeling while capacitors go according to a digital labeling. We should mind polarity designated on the board. Then we do the sockets. And finally the microchip. Be careful not to overheat its leads and don't be stingy with rosin and flux. Don't be afraid of the mess on the printed circuit board as it will be washed off later. For its cooling the microchip is designed to work with the heat sink or it is mounted onto the amplifier frame through a mica spacer. Make sure your soldering is clean after washing off the extra rosin from the assembly side. I usually use gasoline for this. A good soldering means that you've done an impeccable and reliable job. The amplifier is designed for the operating voltage from 7 to 15 volts. Its frequency band goes from 20 to 20,000 Hz. It can be powered by a stabilized transformer power unit with a current load of 3 amperes. It is highly recommended to avoid using switched power supply. For load use acoustic systems with at least 4 ohms of resistance. Now let's see how the amplifier is connected and how it operates. Power supply voltage is connected to a stuff socket. Don't forget about the correct polarity. This is indicated on a printed circuit board, that is plus VCC is power. An installed LED light will inform you of a correct connection. SW1 switch is used for restricting acoustic power. The amplifier inputs X1, X2, X3 and X4 are used for connecting a sound medium. This is done by the microchip itself with its assisting circuit elements, that is capacitors C1, C2, 
C5 and C6. SW2 switch located on the printed circuit board ensures switching into a standby or sleep mode. That means it turns off the microchip's operation mode. Capacitor C9 is the main stabilizing link of the circuit's power supply. Acoustics is connected to outputs X6, X7, X8 and X9. None of the speaker's outputs are connected with the mass, but only by numbering designated on the circuit and the board itself. Output 1 plus minus and output 2 plus minus. The amplifier has a bridge circuit design. A careful assembly and correct connection ensure an impeccable operation of the amplifier without any additional adjustments. The video has been shot at the request of Mikhail Sazonov.